Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WSFT Network. My name is Scott Morgan, Roth, the Motor City Mad Mouth, and tonight we usher in a new broadcast called Inside the Pigskin. So this is an all-football show, and this show will cover NFL, college football, all aspects of pro football, the United States Football League, XFL, Canadian Football League, betting, high school, fantasy, we'll be doing some remote broadcasts. So you want to talk about an all-inclusive football show, we get it. And what we are not going to be talking about tonight will be the Tom Brady retirement, Brian Flores coaching carousel, Jim Harbaugh or the Super Bowl. And the reason why is I know there are very hot topics right now, and I want to go out there and bring on college football expansion. But before I do that, I want to welcome Eric Katz to the big show. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Why don't you give everybody a little bit of an overview of who you work with? Well, I currently am a writer for Belly Up Sports, writing primarily about the Wisconsin Badgers football team. Very good. Well, Eric's going to be a contributor throughout our network. I know he likes to talk about baseball, college football, uh, pro football, you name it. So we'll have ourselves a guy who's very, very versatile. I don't have to give an introduction to Steve Ballesteri, do I? No, I'm on here all the time. I'm like, I'm on your shoe. You can't get rid of me. No, I, I can't and won't, so it doesn't make a look of difference anyway. So it is what it is. Steve is uh, our KG veteran. We know that Eric is a young pup on the crew, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't know anything, okay? Unlike Sergeant Schultz for Hogan's Heroes, this guy knows plenty, okay? And Malfar is my uh, running back who I know to give the rock to when we need to. Welcome back, Mel. You played the game. Now you get to talk about it full time. Thank you. Great to be back. All right, well, like I said before, tonight's topic is going to be college football expansion. And this has been on my mind for a long time, which is why we're leading off with it. Right now, the current college football playoff format is at four teams. I say bring it to 12. I don't even like eight. And I'm going to make a confession out there right now, folks. Okay, this year's college football playoff did not interest me whatsoever. It <clears throat> reminded me of the SEC championship game round two at Indianapolis. So I did not watch the Georgia Alabama game. I went to bed early. So with that said, okay, you want to call this a reason for me to say change it. So with that said, Eric, why don't you give us your thoughts about the final four, which should be anything but the final four. And before you do that, I do want to point out the fact that as of 2020, there are 10 conferences of the 130 schools in the FBS. So to tell me you can only come up with four schools out of that group. Okay, I know we had a couple of first timers of the Michigan Wolverines and the Cincinnati Bearcats, but that final four was way too low. Take it away, Eric. Well, well, it's almost like, I mean, this year was great. It's been getting different teams in there, yes, but generally for a while it was the ACC or the SEC. I mean, generally you might, you might get one or one or two teams from there, but this year was a bit of an odd year, especially with, we didn't anticipate Cincinnati be, being the team that they were this year, but in general, I feel like there needs to be expanded because every year I feel like it's just going to be the SEC versus the SEC. Cause the SEC, like if you make it to the championship game, you know, you're, you're almost like, you're almost an at-large bid, but my thing is they got expanded to eight because you'd be able to get all the bowl games in there. It's like the Rose bowl, which was at one point, everybody's dream to play in growing up. It's almost become a second rate bowl game without it being in the, in the playoff. We saw it this year with players at Ohio state deciding to opt out because they weren't in the college football playoff. And then fans even becoming disinterested because it was the college football playoff. I mean, the Rose daddy, the Rose bowl is the granddaddy of them all. I mean, how can you not be interested in that? You expand it to eight teams. That way you get a big 12 team in there. You get some big 10 in there. You get some sec in there. You get some ACC in there. And then you also, and then you also have an opportunity to obviously, obviously the SEC is going to get in regardless, but you, but all the major conferences would have an opportunity to compete kind of like how they do it now with March madness, which, I feel like now in basketball, compared to basketball, everybody gets in there. Well, I mean, let's face it. I like the bowl games. So do the NFL scouts. That's why I really watch a lot of them. It's another opportunity for these guys to get filmed. And I, I do want to point out that the FCS has a playoff, you know, the football championship series, yeah. and they have a really good setup. I enjoy watching those. And don't kid yourself, those players at those schools are really, really, really good. So, Steve, with that said, 
There it says eight teams. How many teams do you think they should have? I think it should go to 12. And I'll, I'll give you my reasons why. And, you know, you already made my argument. You felt like that you were watching a repeat of the uh, SEC championship game. Well, get rid of the conference championship games. And then you, you, you bring the top 12 teams in. You could spread those out over some of these bowl games. And that's your college playoff. That way, the players aren't going through extra football games. And honestly, I mean, was there a doubt in anybody's mind, like go back to the SEC championship game, that Alabama and Georgia both belonged, you know, in the tournament? So was, was that necessary for them to play twice? I, I don't think so. And the same thing, I mean, Michigan has to beat up um, – was it Iowa and the, you know, right, I can't right. remember now, you yeah. know, but mm -hmm. if, if you, I, I believe if you get rid of conference championship games, which basically all they are is a money grab, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that that's where the, the conferences get their, you know, TV money. If, if you get rid of those, you can expand your, your conference championship, uh, excuse me, your college football play up to 12 teams. You know, you could spread those out over bowl games. And I, I think you have a much better product. And I think it would generate a lot more interest. What do you think, Mel? What's the right amount, eight or 12? <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a college football purist. And I, I can't really say I enjoy watching the, uh, the, the, the playoffs. But I can't really say that I'm a fan of the playoffs. I think it, it, it really hurts the bowl, that whole bowl season. I really think it devalues the bowl games. And you see a lot of players, as Eric was talking, drop out of bowl games uh, because they want to get ready for the draft or whatever the case may be, and possibly, you know, afraid of getting hurt, which, you know, injuries are a part of the game. But I know, you know, from my playing days that bowl games were, were huge. I mean, they were big. And obviously, you know, we had an opportunity to play in – in the biggest role in the granddaddy, you know, in the Rose bowl. And that's what you, it wasn't about trying to make it to a playoff. It wasn't about trying to uh, be the national champion. It was about winning the pack back pack 10 at that particular time. That's what it was about. It was about winning the pack 10, getting an opportunity to play in the Rose bowl, represent your conference in the Rose bowl. That's what our goal was. And, you know, now, you know, you hear these coaches talking, all they're talking about is making the playoffs now. So, you know, forget about winning the SEC or winning the Big Ten. It's not even about that. It's about getting to the playoffs. And I think, you know, it's it just kind of, I again, like I'm 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 a I'm a purist. I mean, I win your conference and everything else will take care of itself. You know, back then, you know, the the they had polls and the polls would vote and they would determine who was the champion. Well, they didn't like that because they didn't feel you're getting the true champion. So then they came up with the BCS and then they didn't like the BCS. So now you have what we have now. Now you say you didn't want to see Alabama and Georgia play again, but they were the two best teams in the country without question, bar, bar none. Those were the two best teams in the country based on their resume. Uh, you know, and so that's what we end up with. Now say Steve, say you, say you made the conference championship games a part of the playoffs. Then if you had Alabama and Georgia playing one another, then one of those teams doesn't move on. Right. So then that's not, and I know that's not what you said, Steve, I understand you saying, just get, yeah. just get rid of them totally. Um, so I don't, you know, I kind of, you know, I, I like it the way it is. I don't think there would have been a different outcome if you would have had 12 teams. You know, I don't, I don't think it was going to be a different outcome. You kind of look at it like the, like uh, we just had the wild, when we had the wild card weekend, you just had some really lopsided games in the wild card weekend. Then all of a sudden in the divisional round and in the, in the championship round, we had some really good football games. And I think that if you expanded it, you're going to have some really lopsided games that are not going to be fun to watch. And all this surround, all this is the only reason why they're talking about expansion is, is because of money. It's all about money. It's all about greed. What about, you know, they always talk about player safety and we want to do what's right for the players. 
These players right now, if you played in that championship game, they're playing 15 games. That's almost an NFL schedule. And they don't, you know, I'd, I'd be really interested to hear what the players want to do. I'd really be interested in here because we don't hear what the players want to do. All we hear about is what the athletic department wants to do or the presidents of the universities want to do. And we know what they want to do. They're trying to, they're they're trying to get money. That's all they want to do. What do the players really want to do? And, and, you know, get them involved in this conversation. And, you know, if they want to expand to eight or 12, you know, expand eight or 12. But I mean, I think you got to look at, you really got to look at the bowl games because some of these bowl games had like no people in the stands. And I know, I know the television ESPN doesn't care about that because, you know, they're getting eyeballs, you know, they're selling eyeballs. So they're selling advertising, but the schools have to be concerned because I'm sure they're, I would think that they're getting some of that revenue that is generated by the attendance. And, you know, the, 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 the cities that these bowl games are held in, I mean, I'm sure they'd like some of that tourist revenue as well. If nobody's in the stands, nobody's watching the game, nobody's physically going to the game, they need to really look at some of these bowl games, whether there's too many, you know, I think in some cases there's too many. If you have a team that's six and six getting into a bowl game, they probably they probably don't really deserve to go to a bowl game. And then some of these bowl games, you know, you have the, you know, you'll have the, the, the eighth best team from the SEC playing against the second best team from, some other, you know, uh, AAC or something like that. I mean, who wants to watch that game? Well, I agree. I mean, let's face it. What I would like to see is some sort of March Madness, or even if it gets to 12, and then you're able, and 12 would be where I would max that out anyway. So I wouldn't go any more than that. But right mm-hmm. now what you have with is you have pretty much 40 bowl games. And to me, those are participation trophies when you win them. And again, the only reason I even like the bowl games is because it gives NFL scouts another opportunity during non-conference play to see other players. That's the, well, the bowl game. The, well, the bowl games are, you know, they're, they're good because they give the coaches and players another, you know, so many practices. So that, that gets, you know, if you have graduating seniors, it gives you an opportunity to put some of these guys that may not, may not have received a lot of practice time gives them an opportunity to get some additional practice time right. before the spring, because the whole thing is about trust. I mean, the coach is going to play if they trust you, if they don't trust you, they're not going to play. The only way they're going to trust you is they got to see you and they got to see you do it. So the more opportunities, these young kids get an opportunity to get out there and practice and play and, and, and show what they can do in front of their coaches, then the more opportunities they're going to have in the fall to, to, to get out there and play. Well, but more importantly though, I agree with you there that they will have an opportunity to play in the fall. And, and remember, for a lot of these smaller schools where the players are actually playing the bowl games and not getting out of them, that's an opportunity to get in front of scouts. So, you know, it's not like you have a major power five school where a guy's decided to get out because I know my stock is as high as it's going to go. And that's a different animal. So I see where you're coming from. But, you know, no, we're looking at the Bahamas Bowl. What are you going to get, 5,000 people to show up? And I think you that's know. the game I was watching one time. I mean, there's like nobody over there. I mean, what, well, are, you, what are you doing? So, you, I mean, don't get me wrong. If I had a bowl game I'd put on my bucket list, I'd like to go to the Bahamas Bowl. For, forget about <laughs> football. Let's just hang out at the beach. Then maybe the football would be the uh, aftermath. But meanwhile, you have other bowl games, which are premium bowl games, that could fall into. You're only talking – what, 12 teams or maybe six bowl games that have some real teeth to them, and then you stay with the current system. You don't have to deviate it. That I mean, I think, all, I think all bowl games are valuable, are good. You know, unfortunately, my senior year, you know, everybody thought we were going to go to the Rose Bowl. They thought we were going to beat SC. Uh, we ended up losing, the, losing to them. So the only bowl game that was available for us at that particular time was the Aloha Bowl. Wow. Well, that was a that was a, a, a – a Christmas day bowl versus a new year's day bowl. I mean, that's what you want to try to do. You want to try to get a new year's day bowl, but it's a Christmas day bowl, but I mean, it was, it was good. Cause we got to go to Hawaii. That was great. Right. Uh, we played against Florida, who was a good team. That's when Emmett Smith was a freshman, a true, fre- a true freshman. And he had, you know, he did everything that, that, you know, obviously we know what Emmett Smith went on to do, but it was a great experience. It's not just about the game. It's about the experience. You know, a lot of these kids ain't ever been nowhere. You know, a lot, you got to understand a lot of these kids I've been, I've, I was fortunate, you know, I, I, you know, I, I had been to some places, but a lot of people hadn't, haven't been anywhere. I remember the first time we played the university of Colorado and guys looked outside and like, what is that? You know, they're talking about the snowfall and I said, man, I, they'd never seen snow before. 
said, man, I'd be upset if that was on my car. You know, that's, that's how these California kids talk. But I think when you really look at 12 teams, you're only looking at six games. That's it. Okay, obviously I'm not a math major, but six times two equals. Well, you're talking about three additional games because, you know. Because that's all. I'm just talking about, yeah, I mean, right now to me, I'm only looking at. Right now they're playing 15, so that's, you know, that's an NFL schedule. That, that's that's well, more. Well, that's no, Canadian I, football schedule. That's 18. Well, I get, well, then we're going to get to 18. We got Mr. Katz here that knows about the USFL too, but we'll even get into that. But I'm talking about if you had a 12-team playoff, okay, and initially 12 teams, you have a, Six times two, you got six extra games. Uh, what is it? Six games, right? Yeah, it's right. only six games, but you know it's six games. So whoever wins is going to play additional three games. All right. Well, that's true. Okay, so I see where the math is. But but and then you prioritize your bowls again. That's what makes it such a stimulating discussion. Okay, as we're talking about twelve teams with an opportunity to get in, and the winner goes on, and then the other bowl games are not adversely affected. That's why I'm having a lot of fun with this topic because right so, now uh, anything is, in my opinion, is better than the current system. So now well, you're talking about probably reducing the number of games that they play during the regular season. Then, well, sure, that gets back to what Steve said. Okay, well, let's. If you're really worried about injuries, then who needs a conference championship games other than the fact that it's a money grab? So well, there you go. You're making my point, Mel and Steve. Obviously, that, that's the good. 13th game. So now you know they play 12 game schedules now, right? Yeah, I think that's what they play. So that's, you know, you, you have to cut it back to like 11. I think when, when I was playing, we played 11. I think we played 11 games back then. Yeah, it was 11. So, I mean, you, you got to cut it back. Well, you can't, you know, these kids ain't getting paid. I mean, it's, it's involuntary servitude. I mean, that, that's just, I mean, you just can't make these kind of decisions unilaterally without getting the students involved, the student athletes involved, who everybody says they're so concerned about. Mel. The thing about um, the thing about it is on our, on that end though is you have to remember though that we're get that these guys are getting name, image, and likeness deals now where they can actually draw a little money for their play on the field. It's not like what it used to with the athletic department gets all the money and then the athletes are just left left to go to class and fend. But the thing about it though name, is name, image, and likeness was never meant to be the way that it is right now. What Ed O'Banion sued the NCAA for yeah. was not for this. It was actually for the universities to pay the students because you look at you look at the the athletic department budgets. You look at some of the you know look at some of the money that these coaches are making, and you're going to tell me there's not enough money to trickle down to the players. You can find a way to pay these coaches money. Brian Kelly, the money, all the money that he's getting. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, the money that he gets. Nick Saban, the money that he's getting. Man, hell, they you know uh, the, the, the Lincoln Riley. I mean they. They paid USC paid bought paid off bought both of his houses in Norman, Oklahoma, and paid a hundred thousand dollars more or whatever over market value for these houses, and gave him a house out there in in Southern California, which I'm certain is not cheap, and they give him a full access to to the private plane, to the private jet, to do whatever he wants to do. Plus, they're paying him a salary. Now you're telling me there's not enough money to pay players. You know, that name, image, image, and likeness, that's not what Ed O'Banion sued the NCAA for. That's not. And this, this name, image, and likeness thing is just a free-for-all. It's a wild, wild west out there. It's just well, crazy. Well, now with um, the reason why, you know, you'd want to you'd expand it, though, besides having, the, besides having the extra film, yeah, like, you know, I understand to your point, Steve, with the conference championships, because I was at the Big Ten Championship this past year, and, you know, Obviously, the tourist money is big. Like every restaurant and bar you went to, you had fans there. There was obviously stuff during the day, stuff happening in the stadium. And obviously, you go and, you go and experience the game, which, to be truthful, Iowa did not have a chance that game. The only reason they back they got they, they backdoored their way in because Wisconsin couldn't get it done against Minnesota, a place they hadn't lost in since 2003. But, you know, the re I know for, for a fact that Iowa wouldn't have gone, wouldn't have been a, wouldn't have been a playoff team. They just weren't. I mean, they're tenant. They were ten and two, yes, but they weren't. They weren't really that dominant. We saw what Purdue did to them. Wisconsin. They came into Camp Randall, and Wisconsin ran them over. But we all know that offensively, they were offensively inept. Just you know, their their defense was you know very good good this past season. But the reason why you'd want to expand it though is like there's always that possibility of an upset. We saw what we saw what happened to Michigan State at Purdue, and we also saw what, what happened with Iowa against Purdue when Iowa lost to him at Kinnick. 
I mean, there's always that possibility. I mean, there's no, you know, guarantee. Yeah, this year's wild card games, like you were saying, for example, were, you know, were a bit of blowout. I get it, but you know, doesn't mean the same thing won't happen next year. We've seen wild card teams go to, go to the Super Bowl. For example, the 05 Pittsburgh Steelers last at the time it was six teams in the playoffs. They got the they got the last seed at 11 and five because the NFC was strong that year. They they go ahead they go ahead and they they win their wild card game. They beat they beat Peyton Manning and they beat Denver in Denver, a very hard place to play. And they and they go ahead and beat the Seahawks, a very, a very, who had Sean Alexander that year, and they go ahead and win. A while, a last seeded team can do it. We've seen it. We've seen Cinderella runs happen. I'm sure we all remember when Jim Valbueno's North Carolina State Wolfpack they upset um, the twin tower the twin towers in that year's NCAA finals. But it can happen. I mean, were, are, were the were the playoff games the, the the two semifinals were those games competitive? No. Actually, Cincinnati, though, to their credit, though, I mean, had they had they done a little more on offense, they actually did. They actually did keep up with they actually hung, got to hang out with Alabama a little bit up until the end. And then Michigan. Well, we knew Georgia had like had one of the best defenses that year. We knew that like it was their year. Unfortunately, in the in the SEC championship, they um, they just weren't getting the stops that they were going. And the offense was kind of stalling at that point. But the fact of the matter is that team it was going to be either Georgia or Alabama this season. You could just tell. I mean, Bryce Young looks like the well, real Alabama. Deal. They, Alabama to me wasn't that impressive this year. Um, they weren't the normal Alice, scary Alabama. They weren't that impressive to me. But I'm just saying, if you expanded the 12 games, does that mean you're going to get more exciting games, or are you just going to have more games? Just I'm, for the sake of having more games. I don't think you want to expand to 12. That's why I go back to the point with eight because I believe that, you know, there is, there are some, I know in some years with with the top 10, there are plenty of worthy teams who who should have been the playoff. For example, not this past year, but the year prior, Texas A&M's only loss was to Alabama, which Alabama beats a lot of teams. We've seen it happen over and over again with Nick Saban, but you know, the fact that Texas A&M should have been in there. I believe they should have that. how How many games did they lose this year? Oh, you're I was talking, talking about this year. Oh, okay. no, I was talking about last. I was talking about last year, where um, where their only loss, they were 11-1. Their only loss was to Alabama. Got you, got you. And that was a. I mean, was it? You know, I thought they should have been in because they they were they lost to Alabama. I mean, Alabama had not a lot of people beat Alabama. I mean, if you beat Alabama, you have a chance to win a national championship. Just ask Coach Ed Radrin's LSU team. Let me ask you: If Alabama plays. Cincinnati 10 times. How many times does Alabama win? I think they win all 10 times because okay. to be truthful, <laughs> be truthful, Cincinnati, Cincinnati got in is because they is because they part of the reason was they beat Notre Dame. That was a Notre big Dame. reason. That's the huge, that's that's the main reason. And then they and then then they ran the table the rest of the way. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they beat Notre Dame, that's what you know, that's what got a nose. Now they had a great year last year, too. Mm-hmm. And so they just kind of uh you know, continue that momentum that they had going on from last year. Uh, but obviously, you know, beating, if they don't beat Notre Dame, they're not in the conversation. Right. Period. They, they, which, you know, the Notre Dame win was impressive because they, they beat them pretty good. Um, but Notre Dame is not a good football team. I mean, they, they, I mean, they, they won. I mean, you know, they ended up with a good record, but they're not a great football team. They're just, you know, they're not college football great. We've seen what happens to them in the playoffs and also in the beast, even in the BCS when they, Faced same Alabama. Thing happened, same thing that happened to Michigan. That's yep, the lights got up. The lights get a little too bright for these teams, and then you know we see what happens. We saw Michigan get curb stomped by Georgia after they won the Big Ten championship, and after also Michigan finally beating Ohio State. Well, let me but, find one thing here that is interesting. Whether this thing goes to eight or twelve, okay, if it does go to at least eight, no undefeated team can go out there and complain that they didn't even make it into a playoff. So that eliminates any of that. How many times have we heard the likes of a Central Florida complain, we didn't get in, okay? And then they self-proclaim themselves national championships, which to me is about as clowny, okay, as a clown that they have in Jacksonville for Trent Balky, okay? That was a clown show if I've ever seen there when it comes to Central Florida proclaiming themselves national championships because we were undefeated, big deal. So we eliminate any of these pseudo champions, if I may add. Okay, so you eliminate the undefeated there. So you go eight or twelve, it doesn't make any difference. And again, this whole show, mind you, folks, is about college football expansion. 
I'm not smart enough, I'm not getting paid enough to tell you whether it's eight or 12. That's why you got the guys in ties that'll never figure it out anyways, attempting to figure it out in the first place. So, but whether you have eight or you have 12, you eliminate the undefeated. And of course you do want to be able to have those marginal teams that can't complain that there weren't enough people in there to get their shot at the title. Well, and, and, Central Florida is again, a gr- is like they're playing in the American, the American conference, the former big East. They're essentially in a comp, you know, with Scott Frost, they were essentially what the university of Miami was for the longest time when they were in the big East, where right. they would practically just curb stomp everybody on their way to a bit on, on their way to a BCS bowl game because Miami was just, was just the superior team of the time, which obviously they're not anymore. It was Miami and Virginia Tech, wasn't it? Weren't they beating up everybody? Wasn't Florida State in the Big East too, and they came over to the uh, ACC? Yeah, Florida State was. I mean, that was the big rivalry. Was it would determine who goes to the B- who would go to a BCS Bowl at the time, which was either Miami or Miami or Florida State. This was before conference championships, right. and and then it was also um, that was those were just the two teams in the conference. Obviously, Bobby Bowden was in his heyday at the time. And the Big East was a basketball school, and right? You know, that's, and it still and it still is. Well, yeah, now it's all basketball, all Catholic school now. But I think they have uh, Connecticut, Connecticut's in there now too. They they allow Connecticut to play there. Yeah, but the Big East didn't have a period where they did football. Then obviously they went back to basketball. But I, I see the point is when you have these marginal conferences trying to get into the. Uh, I don't want to say the little big dance here because it'll never get very big anyways. I know, Steve, you're absorbing every bit there. Are you chomping at the bit to go ahead and watch this chess match between Mel Farr Jr. and Eric Katz while we both could be? I think they're both guys? bringing up great points. Oh, I mean, I was just looking at it from the standpoint, like, if you're going to have a legitimate playoff, I think you, you need to expand the teams, be it 8 or 12. And I think Mel's right. You have to cut some of the, you know, some of the regular season games off. But I know a lot of these teams, you know, some of the big name teams like Alabama, for instance, they they uh, schedule like one of these small schools that they usually beat 73 to nothing like Savannah State or something like that, you know, to for these smaller schools to get some TV time. Get some money. I mean, they get some money. Yeah, they yeah. get money. They get those guaranteed. That's right. DNAs. But do, do we really money. need to see, you know, Bryce Young throw six touchdowns against Savannah State? No. It's a glorified scrimmage, Steve. Come on. You, you pay the small. I ought to know. I, I mean, Florida Atlantic University, but, you know, Schnellenberger made a living going out there getting waxed all the time. So the only reason Howard Schnellenberger isn't in a football hall of fame, college football, is because, number one, his record wasn't above 600 to begin with. But why? Because he's building programs from scratch, right, to begin yeah. with. And then he's taking those big, lofty paydays, and and these are teams are having glorified scrimmages. I know we could do a totally different show on that. Oh. Well, you remember, though, Michigan got beat by one double-A team. Well, yeah, but let me tell you something about that. You bring that one up. I saw that one coming. I'll never forget. I'm glad you brought that up, okay? Appalachian State. It was the first game. I covered at Florida Atlantic against Middle Tennessee State over at Lockhart Stadium. And I had another guy who was a good friend of mine that was a prognosticator. And when he asked me about what I thought of the App State Michigan game, I said, his name was Mark. I said, I have a feeling that the Wolverines were in for a tough battle because this is one of the best teams in that division. And what do you think happened? The Michigan lost. And I looked at him. He said, How did you know that? Because I do my research. I'm a journalist. Okay. Don't forget it. I am a journalist, okay. A, that and, was before that was before App State became a um, became right. a because part of the reason was I mean that was post I believe that was the post Lloyd Carr year where it was the first year I believe Rich Rodriguez. And no, that no, I think uh, the, the year that App State beat Michigan, okay, Lloyd Carr was the head coach, is what he was, okay, Eric. Just so you they know, went oh, it, they started zero oh, two that year. Well, whatever, okay, but it, mm-hmm. Lloyd Carr was a head coach. At that mm-hmm. time, Michigan ended up paying Appalachian State $500,000. I've done my homework on this one, and, I, and I've talked about it a lot. And that $500,000 was worth a lot of TV money, and Michigan ended up beating Florida in the bowl game, but they were licking their chops the rest of the year. How, how did Appalachian State beat us? They ended up rescheduling them again for another year and beat them because they couldn't handle the thought of being 0-1 in App State. So, you know, Eric, I realize you're very knowledgeable in a lot of areas, but you're talking about a guy who's 
Michigan born and bred, who's been around the country a little bit and follows. I'm wearing a USF hat, folks, because it is my alma mater. But deep down inside, I bleed maize and blue, and I have a lot of people that work there. So I don't want to yeah. get totally I knew, um, I, I was I was right, though. It was like the latter Lloyd Carr year, the, the latter Lloyd Carr. The latter Lloyd Carr years, yeah. I mean, but Lloyd Carr was the head coach at the it time. It was an app state. We'll get you, you know, we'll get you, we'll get that seat hot. <laughs> yeah, well, Lloyd Carr, well, I mean, uh, that it was his latter years, okay, but the reality of the situation is, you know, those guaranteed games can bite you. How many other ones? Michigan got, was the first one that lost, but don't you think that those guaranteed games were given, okay, later on down the road after Michigan got the biggest wake-up call on the planet? So. It, near, it nearly happened again, though, except it wasn't a 1A school. They, they, Michigan nearly lost to Army first first game of the year back in 2019. It well, nearly happened. Well, I, I hear you. I mean, these things can happen. You know, you can find prospects from any school if you want. I don't care whether you talk about Jackson State. Whether you can That's why they play the games, right? Yeah. That's why right. they play the games. Because yeah. you never know, you know, you never know what's going on with it, you know, in the head of an 18 to a 22-year-old. You know, he, he could have, you know, failed a test. His girlfriend could have broke up with him. You know, could have caught his girlfriend cheating. You never know. You can I mean, there's a lot of that. things going on with 18-year-olds. Well, uh, that's it. You can find I talent just, anywhere you want. The whole idea is... Are you going to get noticed at a bigger school and all that? David and Goliath. But the reality of the situation is, is even if we talk about the college football playoff expansion, I'm a firm believer. I don't care what level you're at. Any team can beat any team on any given day. We've seen mm -hmm. it time and time again, whether it's special team, defense, offense, not performing well. You know, that. You know why do you think the NFL tournament is so great? Because, you know, if you were to go back to what you're saying, Mel, how many times that these teams are going to face each other time and time again? Who would win the majority? But it doesn't make any difference on that one given day, Saturday. The NFL, yeah, the NFL tournament is a little bit different. You know? No, but mm -hmm. the point is, is anybody can beat anybody. In a, in Absolutely. A I mean, I, we, you know, the year I went to the playoffs, we were a wild card team, and you know, right. it was tough. We, we made it to the NFC Championship too. Yeah, yeah. We went, you know, we had to, you know, the last game of the season, we had to travel out to New England and play them, and then uh, we had to travel back out for the wild card game against Philly. Came back home. And then went back out to New York to, to play to play the Giants and, and won in overtime and came back home and just went up the coast of San Francisco and got Molly whopped. You oh yeah, I mean, you know, that I mean that's Jerry Rice, that you know, Bill Walsh, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Roger Craig. I mean, but still oh, you beat you beat Parcells, you beat Parcells though. That's hard to do. You beat Parcells. Yes, we did. Look at this guy. Oh, well, like I said, I was uh what can I tell you? We have a one thing I love about our broadcast is whether you're young, you're old, and don't make a lick of difference, at least I know one thing, we're going to all learn something from each other, and that's what it's all about. When I want to talk about kicking off a brand new show like Inside the Pigskin, just so you know, Inside the Pigskin can be found on speaker.com and the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. It is important to realize that when we talk about these kind of things, that it's all wide open, and I enjoy when everybody has an opportunity to not only learn something, but also express their opinions. I think that's what we generally, that's what we accomplish, right, Steve? Absolutely. So when we put a button on this show here, Eric, good first act. Okay, what are your, so I'm going to go to final thoughts, Steve. Give me your final thoughts about college football expansion. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I would like to see it expanded either eight or 12 teams, I, I, I would. I would do away with conference championship games and maybe one or two of the, you know, the uh, gimme games they, they schedule early in their uh, regular seasons, uh, stick to their conference schedules and, and go from there. I mean, I would incorporate some of these uh, playoff games into the bowl season and, and do it that way. But um you know, I just don't like the, the four teams. I don't. I, to me, it, it's, it's too arbitrary who gets in. And, you know, like we've seen in the NFL playoffs, the way they've been going, there's always a team that gets hot at the right time. And if, if a team makes it into the tournament, they might be able to uh, go all the way. You never know. All right. So, Steve, final question. How many teams? I'd like to see 12. I, I, I started off with that, so I'll stick with it. Okay, Eric, go ahead. I just think that, you know, 
it's obvious who's going to get in. It's going to be the SEC, the Big Ten, and then the ACC if it's not having if it's not having a bad year like this year. And but I feel like you know other conferences should have a chance to get in, like the you know the Pac-12 or the uh, the the Pac-12. You know, obviously more from the ACC. Also the Big Twelve where offenses rule. But and you know, I just think that you know we've seen it time and time again in the in the playoffs where a team will get hot. They'll they'll do some unthinkable things that we don't think will happen, and then they'll and then they and then they win a championship. That can still happen. I mean, did it happen this year with um, the in the NFL playoffs? No, but we've seen it happen before. Take the the 07 Giants for example, win all their road games and then go ahead and take down the under the then undefeated New England Patriots. It can happen. I just think that other teams deserve a chance to at least compete. I mean, you know, some you might catch the the better team napping, thinking, oh, we're just going to roll them. We see it happen all the time during the regular season. Okay, but Eric, you're saying eight teams of the college football expansion. Is that correct? Correct. And give me one more piece of logic why it should be eight. You would be you would include all the big bowls. Like no, the Rose Bowl would no longer be treated like a second rate bowl game. You get the Cotton Bowl in there, the Peach Bowl in there. All the big bowl games would be in there, and then they would all. And then you know, obviously, you can reshuffle them for the national for the national championship, whatever you want to do. Kind of mix it up with the kind of have a mix of BCS as well as, as well as um as well as current playoff. I just think you'd be able to blend the two systems together, and also eight teams. Eight teams is enough. There are plenty of teams like there are plenty of teams behind you know, the one, the one through four that were equally as worthy. Probably, probably not so much this year, but in the past five, five and six have been very, very strong. Works for me. Mel, closing thoughts, college football expansion. How many teams? I'm not really for it, to be honest with you. Okay. I, I think, uh, you know, you look, I don't, I don't even think I watched the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl this year because you had the uh, Pac-12 champion going against uh, the second best team in the, in the, out of the big, out of the big 10. I mean, that, that to me, that's not what, what the Rose Bowl is about. The Rose Bowl is about the Pac-12 champion going against the Big Ten champion, and you want to see good on good. Um, so I'm not, I can't, you know, I can't really, you know, I enjoy it as a fan, you know, watching the football games because I love watching football. I love, you know, I love watching college football. So I, I enjoy watching it as a fan, but I, I can't really say that I'm all for expansion uh, because the players get left out in this whole deal. The only ones that are going to be making money are the schools and the players get left out. And you know what, Mel, I respect your point of view. I really do. So what we have here, folks, okay. Steve believes in 12, Eric believes in eight. Mel doesn't believe it at all. And I guess I'll give you my opinion here. I believe that you can take Steve Ballesteri and I, and you can put us on a Xerox copy here because I believe that they should go 12 for every reason that Steve talked about. And that's just my opinion. Now I will throw one little wrinkle before we wrap it up here is bear in mind the SEC is going to be expanding by two teams and Oklahoma and Texas join. So that'll be a very interesting dynamic to see how that plays out for another episode. Okay. But I'm just throwing that in there. So meanwhile, great first act by my crew here. So with that said, the way we usually do things is Steve, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Well, thanks. And as always, it's a pleasure to be on here with you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Steve B7SFG. I write for patsfans.com. Uh, I do a podcast for them. And I also am a national security columnist for 1945.com. Beautiful. All right, Eric. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and just at Sports Team News. You'll be able to um, you'll be able to see me there. Also, feel free to go on bellyupsports.com. Take a look at my uh, my Wisconsin Badgers football content. Got a lot of great stuff there, and should be and it should be another good year. Mel, all the different social media at Mel Far Junior, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and find out what we have going on here in Atlanta and uh, back in Detroit at melfar.org and last but not least me okay i'm the owner ceo publisher of south florida tribune you can find this broadcast on our youtube channel south florida tribune youtube channel subscribe for free then you get all the videos that we have as uh, from all of our different shows out there and we have lots of different ones you can also find them on www dot south florida tribune.com you can also find us on twitter at tribune south so you're listening to our first broadcast of inside the pigskin 
My name is Scott Morgan Roth. We hope you enjoy this edition and we're going to have all kinds of great shows on this particular show. And it was just so glad that we were able to kick it off with three fine people such as Steve, Eric, and Mel. I enjoy the camaraderie with you guys and, you know, looking forward to having you guys on a lot of different shows as we always have. Welcome to the team, Eric. We appreciate you kicking off this uh, inaugural show for Inside the Pigskin. Thank you, Scott. All right. Well, on behalf of Steve Ballesteri, Eric Katz, Mel Farr Jr., my name is Scott Morgan, Rock the Motor City Manmouth. Thank you for joining us on Inside the Pigskin. And until the next time, please be safe, everybody, and don't and take COVID nineteen seriously. It's still out there. We have to be very careful. Take care. Good night, everybody.